Young boy born in the M. Young boy come at the NG. Young boy born in the M. Young boy come at the NG. 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 Young boy born in the M. Young boy come at the NG. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Um, if it's the first time you're here, welcome. I am the organised medic and I love to film everything to do with planning and organising. Um, and if this is a return, then welcome back. I'd be really um, happy if you could like and subscribe this video and it will encourage me to make more videos. Okay, so this video is going to be about changing from my current Hobonichi cousin to my new 2022 spring Hobonichi cousin. So the initial Hobonichi cousin I got for 2021 was a spring start. Um, and that means that it starts in April and goes all the way to the end of March. And then the new one starts in April 2022. So this is what I have here now. Um, so I'm just going to show you what the new Hobonichi cousin looks like. I, got, I get mine from Amazon Japan. I'm based in London in the UK and so ordering from Hobonichi itself, uh, the delivery charges from Japan are quite high. But from Amazon Japan, it's much more reasonable. Um, look at that. It's so fresh and clean, beautiful. Uh, so hopefully you can see this very well. So it's a very clean design, Hobonichi Cousin. For those of you who are already familiar with the Hobonichi brand, nothing fancy on the outside, but just lovely cream colour. Um, nothing on the back as well. So I'll show you what I did with the previous one. Uh, so I'm really excited to move into this one and get it set up. And I'm hoping this year to be a little bit more um, decorative with my planner. Ultimately for me, it's functional, but it would be quite nice to be more decorative. So I'll just do a quick flip through of the new planner. Um, so of course, the first page is just blank. Um, Hobonichi ha used Tomo River paper which is a very thin paper, which allows um, this planner to hold enough pages to have a sort of yearly ov overview. Um, this sort of Gantt chart page, monthly pages, weekly and daily. So a whole 365 pages for each and every day, which is fantastic. So just looking at the year overview, you get the entire year 2022. You get the previous year, 2021, and next year, 2023. So last year, I didn't do anything particularly fancy with this. This year, I will. Um, I have ordered some stickers to kind of cover up some of the Japanese writing to make it a bit clearer. Um, so when those stickers arrive, I will do that and, and, and show you. Um, and then you get these pages. So obviously, because this is the spring start, it starts in April and goes all the way through to the following year. So all the way through to March 2023. And so it's sort of a um, a column per month and lots of people use this for tracking. For the year 2021 to 2022, I kind of um, planned to use it for tracking and that was completely unsuccessful. So I, I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do this year, but I think I will try and um, think about it before I start because I made a bit of a mess of it last year. OK, and then you move over to the monthly pages. So it gives you a couple of months beforehand as the normal January start one does. So obviously this is supposed to start on the 1st of April, which it does, but you do get February and March, just so you can move into it a little bit earlier. Um, it's it's sort of mid-March for me now, so I will probably start this on the 1st of April, on the 1st of April. And so you've got nice monthly pages. Down here I tend to use um, sort of sort of write the focus of the month and then this section here I tend to put sort of people's birthdays for next month so that when I see that I can start thinking right I need to prepare for the person's birthday on the following month um, so I'll show you a little bit about what I've been doing with my current planner and then when you get all of the monthly pages so that will take you all the way up to you actually get May so although it sort of ends end of um really end end of March 2023 but you also get April again and May so it always gives you a few extra months before and after and then we move to the weekly pages which really starts kind of 1st of April so you get the last few days in March then it starts the 1st of April and you get the weekly pages in columns so here you have the month just as a, a number um, and then you sort of get you know an hourly view so it starts at 5am which for me is perfect because my day often does start at 5am 
and it goes all the way down to 4 a.m. So it's a full 24 hour day you get. And for me, it's really important that I utilize every single hour in the day. So this hourly layout for me is absolutely perfect. So you get all of the weekly pages for the entire year. And then, where are we? So then, so it ends um, end of April, 2023. And then you get this turning the page where you get this blank spread. It's very faint dot grid. Not sure how well you can see that. Very faint dot, dot grid. Um, and then you turn over to the next page and you go onto your day per page. So at the beginning of each month, you get a blank page with no grid on it. It's just a plain bit of paper. And so I did start doing kind of a review of the previous month, just sort of a month review. Uh, I've seen lots of people do very decorative things on this page, watercolours, etc. And the beauty of the Tumma River paper is it does take watercolour very well. It takes fountain pen very well. It takes gel pens very well. Um, so it's a fantastic planner. And then when you get that after you sort of turn into the month of April, then you get the day to a page. And so with each day, you do get a bit of an hourly view. So it's not each square per hour. So it kind of goes um, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, it is actually. So six, seven, eight, nine. So you get from again from 5 a.m. down to um, four o'clock in the morning, but it's just condensed. And then you also get a few um to do dots i'm not sure how easily you can see i'll show you a bit more closely you do get these kind of um to do check boxes which i tend to write over because it is quite light po apologies for the shadows um so yeah it's really fantastic planner you get a, a day for every single page you do lose a little bit of um real estate of the paper here with the the japanese um writing which i, I obviously I, I can't read japanese so i'm not sure what that says but um, you can always cover that up with some washi tape or a sticker and then you can utilise this space. There are lots of creative ways to do that. And so also with every uh, month, the pages do change colour. So April is kind of red. Then you get to May, which is this green colour. And it's all very subtle as well. So it's not really in your face. Uh, June, you have this kind of sage green. Um, July is blue. August is purple. Uh, September is, uh, is kind of almost like a, a muted maroon, which kind of fits quite well with the autumn colours or fall and October purple, which I think fits really well with October as well. So you can tell there's been a little bit of thought put into the colours. November is this kind of more forest green colour and then December looks like it's red, which I think goes nicely with the kind of Christmas month. So, yep, this is my Hobonichi cousin. At the end, there are lots of... Um, information pages which i don't tend to use um there's a timetable page there which i think is fantastic for students there's a favorites page where people put like you know favorite movies or favorite books there's even graph paper here if you wanted to track your weight i guess um there's my 100 and i think i had started to write the books that i was reading in here for the last um last year so I might use that. Um, and then oh, there's all of these information pages, which is all in Japanese. Um, some people do maybe put sticker paper over and, and, and cover these up and use it for other things. Um, so yeah, there's lots of options, but that is my brand new Hobonichi Cousin Spring Start. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a little bit of my current planner and how I've been using it. So this is my Hobonichi Cousin 2021 to 2022 spring start. I have it here in a Moterm cover, and this is a pearl um, croc, and I have an Ollie clip at the front. I always have this. Um, I guess it's more decorative. I don't really use it. So in the front cover, I just have a few sort of dot stickers, which I can probably take out because I'm not using these at the moment. And I have a notebook that I've sort of tucked into the front cover here. This is a very thin notebook. And I think for the new um, planner, I will replace this with one of the thin Hobonichi A5 notebooks using Tummo River paper because I like the fact that this is thin, but it's 48 pages. It's just regular paper and this is kind of a reference. So I have a, a few um, bits and pieces of, of information that I want to keep beyond a year. Um, because, of course, each of these books, after a year, I will archive them and get a new book. So I want one book that will have reference information that I want to have with me all the time that I don't want to keep on updating 
every year. So I keep that tucked in there. And once I get my um, Hobonichi A5 thin notebook, then I will transfer the information into that. Um, another Ollie clip here, which I love. And again, I'm not really using it functionally for any anything. I think these large ones are much more decorative, to be honest. Um, I, I have a smaller one as well, which I'll show you. I've just got my name. That's my name, Rhoda. I've just got it in sort of a vinyl sticker that I bought from an Etsy shop. I can't remember um, which one, but I will pop the details in the description box below. Um, I used a piece of A4 paper to tuck inside this plastic cover to decorate it and printed off a picture of with Afro hair mermaid type figure, which I thought was very cool. Um, but because this is A4 paper, it doesn't quite cover it because obviously the Hobonich cousin is A5, but you also have the size of the spine as well. So if you're going to tuck paper in here, it's going to have to be bigger than A4, a bit longer to get all the way to the edges. So I have learned that lesson <laughs> for the next one, and I will probably use some decorative paper to tuck inside the next one. And I think this vinyl I've actually stuck on, yeah, I've stuck it on the plastic cover, so it will be there when I transfer my new cousin um, into this plastic cover and probably have a different image on the front. Okay. So when I when you turn in the first page, I have my Urban, Urban French blotting paper, which is very popular. I think people who use um, these planners tend to have some blotting paper, particularly if you're using fountain pens. It's quite useful to just make sure that the ink doesn't sort of when you close the book doesn't go on the other pages. So this is essential. OK, um, I have some stickers here that I'm really not using. I should probably take these out. These are very old stickers that I made myself a long time ago. Um, I think I've showed on a previous video my drunken sober sober stew stickers, exercise stickers, etc., etc. And um, I've made stickers for sort of you know when I'm getting my hair done, when I've got uh, tummy ache, um, things like that, I guess. And a few back to school inset day half term, and when my husband is on nights, so he he's a surgeon. So I I made these a while ago, and I guess I just. I'll keep them anyway. Okay. And this is, these are transparent um, sticky notes, which I've fallen in love with. I love the idea of transparent sticky notes. And I bought some of these I just got from AliExpress, very inexpensive. Um, and then, of course, you can write on them and then stick them down. And, of course, you can still see the text that you have underneath. Now, the difficulty I had is you can't write, um, just use any old pen on these. Um, so... You know, if I just write test here, now this writes really well. This is a Sarasa dry pen. Um, so this has been a bit of a game changer for me. And in particular, the which of the pen works really well on these, the Sarasa mark on pen. This works really well as well. Um, so if I write test, that also works really well. So both of these pens do write nicely on these because they're quite glossy. Um, but before I picked up these pens, the sticky the transparent sticky notes were pretty useless i have to say and i had to go back to the paper ones until i i managed to get my hands on these pens so that's been a game changer now i can I enjoy my transparent sticky notes so i will probably get some more so i have you know a whole stack but i take a few off and stick them to the inside cover so that they're handy for me to to get hold of this is a card from my Cultivate What Matters Power Sheets Goal Planner with my words of the year, which are trust and consistent, um, mainly trust, but I guess the second word of the year for me is consistent. And this is a little Ollie clip. So just to sort of um, highlight that, I find the small clips more functional because it's much easier to clip these pages together. And because it's small, it's not um, too bulky. You can I can sort of turn the page and write on top of that. Whereas the big ones, if you're using that to clip pages together, it's so bulky that it actually hinders the use of the planner. So I like the small size. Uh, so I, I'm, this is my work planner. I use it for pretty much almost everything. And because of the nature of my job, I can't really show you the contents of it. But I have done sort of a, a mock-up monthly page here to show you, to give you a rough idea of how I use it. So I've kind of written an example of how I might set up my monthly page. Um, this is the February month from 2021. I didn't actually start using this till April 2021. So I use this as an example example to do an example month for you. Okay. Apologies for the lighting again. Hopefully you can see this okay. So um, 
what I normally do, I haven't got it here, but I would normally have a large sticker here that says February because although the number two is there for February, when I'm flicking through, I find it quite hard to know what month it is based on just the numbers. And so I will show you an example of the stickers I use and I need to buy some actually for my new one. So I need to remember that. Um, and then what I tend to do is use just a regular pen, any old pen, fountain pen, or one of these Sarasa dry pens, or one of the pens that I have been using, which I know is very popular in the planner world, is the Enagel Klenner pen, to just write my um, timetable for the month. And I do it probably as far in advance as I can. Um, I would fill in the monthly pages, at least for the next three, four months ahead particularly if there are conferences or events that are six months away, whatever, I would definitely put those in. And then I would just put in my schedule. So for example, you know, I put my, my clinics, meetings, when I'm on, the days that I'm on call, um, the days that I have admin research, if I'm lecturing, and then things like the children's activities. So taking them swimming, any birthdays. And then I would put, so for instance, my husband on nights, just put that there. So I kind of have an idea of when that's going to happen because it will affect my my schedule probably as well. So this area here, I would use this um, for the things that I need to focus on. So here I'd put this month service the car budget, which every every month I sort of at the end of the month sit down and do the kind of expense review and budgeting um, projects, things like that that I need to focus on. I I put here, and then I sort of use the second half of this section for connect. So I would put. Uh, I haven't quite finished decorating this. All I do is just use a, a mild liner to write connect and then I just, you know, I outline it a bit with a black pen. Um, and then I think of three people in my life, friends, um, family members, um, professional contacts that I just want to catch up with for whatever reason. And I pop that there to remind me that this month I need to try my best to connect with these people. Because I think life gets so busy sometimes, you work, 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 and you tend to forget. Um, so I'm going to show you an example of a weekly page. So I would set up the months, um, you know, as far in advance as I can, and then every so often go back in and fill in the months going along. Um, and then at the beginning of the week, I would fill in the weeks, maybe two, three weeks in advance. So I'll show you an example of a weekly page that is uh, a couple of weeks time. So this is actually my real weekly page. So I have here sort of my early morning starts, which is part of my uh, goals for 2022 to have at least four days a week that I start my day at 5 a.m. Um, just so that I have a couple of hours to myself. It's often not a couple of hours because by 6.30, everybody else is getting up and I have things to do. But at least if I start the day at five, between five and 6.30, I've had at least one and a half hours to myself where I can get a bit of work done, have a bit of quiet time. Um, and it just helps me uh, kind of recalibrate for the day so I find that really useful and at the moment I'm aiming to do that at least four days a week so if I have it in my planner it just I find it helpful and then I would just um, write the tasks that I have my schedule for the week for work and I just use mild liners uh, to so the mild liners I use are very popular sort of zebra mild liners on the one end you have this kind of beveled edge that makes it very easy to do these lines. And on this end, you have the pointed edge, which I kind of use to write, which I'll show you a little bit later on. So um, these are what I use, and I tend to use the same colors for everything. So I know that if it's a clinical thing, if it's a clinic or ward round or whatever, I'm gonna be using green. If it's a meeting, so if it's an MDT meeting or a departmental meeting, whatever meeting it is, I know it's purple. And then of course, if I'm on call, then I know I'm going to be using this pinky ready orange color. And if it's sort of non-work related, I tend to use yellow. So for gym, yellow. If it's admin work, I'll use the gray. And then for research, I use brown. Although sometimes I switch the colors around a little bit. If it's something educational, like library, or if I'm teaching or um, going to a teaching session, then I would use blue. And it just helps me when I open it up to see you know, these are the colours and it does correlate with my monthly as well. So if you go back to my monthly, you can see the purples are usually meetings, greens, clinical work, reds on call, etc. And so I find that colour coordination quite helpful. It's not sort of a 
coordinating minimalistic so I do see lots of really amazing um, planner people who have very neutral muted colours that look beautiful together for me because this is functional I, I need the colours to stand out so you know green doesn't necessarily go with purple but I know that green is clinical and so that I find that quite helpful so I'm going to show you uh, then the daily page with the Mo, um, Moterm covers similar to other leather covers like those from Gilio, you get two uh, two of these bookmark thingy-majigs. And I like these a lot. I use these all the time. Uh, I usually have the Ollie clip at the front so to help me turn directly to the monthly page. Then I would have one of the bookmarks to help me turn directly to my weekly page. And it's nice and long, so I can just do this. It's very, I, I think that's fantastic. And then I have the second one that helps me turn directly to my daily page. So uh, this is just an example of a daily page because, of course, the daily pages, I, I have a lot more detail on there. So I can't really um, show you uh, a daily page in detail. But I'm going to um, just do an example of a daily page. So this is something that I would do. Um, I would put sort of gym in the morning, library here. Um, and then with the to do, what I did is I just used a yellow mod liner to write to do um i'm just going to write my to-do list for the day i tend to put the boxes first so that they're all aligned And then what I can do is I can utilise the bottom half of the page for something else. My kids have missed. Look at what my kids have done to this mild liner. I'm devastated. Um, so for this, I would tend to use this side of the mild liner anyway. So this is a typical kind of daily page for me. And as the day goes on, my list gets longer and longer and messier and messier. I might sort of drop down notes and various things. And if, for instance, there's something um, that's very important, I can grab a sticky note. What's quite nice is because it's transparent, it has the grids underneath. So it helps me kind of write on this, even though it's a blank sticky note. And if I don't get these tasks done, if particularly if I think oh, I've got far too many things on here, I'm going to write the rest on the sticky note, then I can just lift that up and then place it on the next day so that I don't have to rewrite it. And I can do my sort of um, listing, whatever, start again for Saturday when Saturday comes. Um, and I have this on the sticky note. so. Yeah, that's an example. And then, of course, when I finished writing all of that, what I do is use my blotting paper to just close it so that that ink doesn't go on the next page. Um, so, yeah, that is a walkthrough of my current Hobonichi cousin and a flip through of my new whoop, my new spring start Hobonichi cousin. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. And I would love to hear... Um, you know what you guys are using for 2022 obviously we're already into the end coming towards the end of the first quarter of the year so it'd be really good to hear about how you guys have um, utilized your planners have you changed are you still doing the same thing that you just decided on in January um, and how do you use your planners functionally particularly for work um, if you have any tips or tricks then I would love to hear about it please comment below um, and like and subscribe Thank you. Bye-bye.
I'm still up in these hills, still air paying these bills, yeah. still air paying this tax, yeah. still trying to come out the race of rats. Don't matter what the salary be, I'm still in the wheel, my friend. Don't matter what the salary be, I'm still in the wheel, it's dead. Come out of school in there, come out of your yard, you still ain't left.